Okay, this is part B of the top 10 lies against Gary Johnson and Bill Weld. Number 6. Because I already did 5 in part A. Number 6. Gary doesn't care about the environment. That lie comes from a couple of clips where somebody asked Gary about a proposed carbon emissions tax that, you know, vile Obama wants. And at first, Gary thought, well, you know, maybe it's okay. And then the libertarians hit him for doing that, because that's totally against libertarian views. So that kind of tells you that Gary's predisposition toward considering something is to get rid of pollution. And the libertarians took him to task for it, so he said, okay, See, he listens to people. He went back, he looked at the specific proposals, and he realized that those specific proposals would not help. But he believes in reducing carbon emissions. Now, during the town hall with Chris Matthews on the 28th of September, which is yesterday now, Gary explained that, had a chance to explain it a little better. He's very pro reducing pollution, but, and this is the big kicker, the proposal has to actually do that. Now the big problem with climate change, which he's also for, I'm against, the big thing about climate change is, okay, does the proposal actually help? the problem of supposed climate change. If yes, then he'd be for it. If no, then he's not for it. You see, here's what politicians do. And Gary's not a politician, so he's not thinking that way. Politicians will say something that they know you want, and then they'll come up with a proposal that feeds their cronies. And because it uses the buzzwords that you like, you'll think it actually works. It doesn't work. Uh, uh, seriously, this happens all the time. It's been happening, well, it happens in all governments, really, not just the United States. But that's how politicians get you. That's how Donald Trump won over the Christians. Oh, I, I'll protect Christianity. No, he won't. The Bible even says he can't. In the very verse he read at Liberty University, 2 Corinthians 3, 17, says he can't. If you go read the whole chapter, 2 Corinthians, just go read it. It says, government doesn't matter, only the Holy Spirit matters, and wherever the Holy Spirit is, like in you, then you have liberty. But Donald Trump replaced the Holy Spirit said he would protect Christianity. Ding, 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 ding. That's God flying a blimp over the sky saying, don't vote for this guy. But the Christians don't know what Bible says and they don't even bother to look it up because they hate the Bible. This is at Liberty University, which gives degrees in biblical theology. And nobody noticed that Donald Trump replaced the Holy Spirit in the very verse he quoted. As soon as I heard him say that, I'm like, oh, okay, God, I hear you. Not this guy. Never Trump. God is never Trump. But you see, because he quoted a Bible verse, all the Christians started drooling. Oh, Trump must be godly. He quoted the Bible. Actually, he reversed the Bible, but you were too damn dumb. You didn't go look it up, so you didn't know. See, that's how politicians work. They say mom and apple pie, or if you think climate change is something that you really ought to have a government program on, well then they'll say climate change, climate change, climate change, and then propose whatever they want in order to benefit their cronies, and it ain't gonna help climate change, honey. It'll help their cronies. And then when that program doesn't work, because of course it won't, then they'll say, oh, well, then we need more government programs. It, we just didn't have enough. Yeah, and then more cronies are benefited, and you're the stupider for it. Gary is not stupid. He knows.
that using catchwords and buzzwords to get votes doesn't mean that the proposals that allegedly serve those goals work. So he's skeptical. But he's pro cleaning the environment. Who wouldn't be? And if you go into YouTube and you type in Penn Gillette Gary Johnson, you'll come up with an hour long video that Penn Gillette did with Gary Johnson, and about 45 minutes into it, I think, is where Gary starts talking about a situation while he was governor of New Mexico and some ding-dong was polluting one of the rivers in New Mexico. And he kept on threatening the guy, I'm going to sick the EPA on you. See, he believes in the EPA. The guy wouldn't listen, he kept polluting, so Gary Johnson did what he promised. He sicked the EPA on the guy and that, that pollution stopped. He didn't like pollution, who does? You know, I mean it's not really, and Gary doesn't say this but I do, it's not a question of climate change. It's a question of immediate pollution in your immediate area and that has always, forever, been an issue. And it will always be an issue. It was an issue long before we had industrialization. Go look up Ancient Rome, also called SPQR, polluting the Tiber. Tiber is the river that ran through Rome. They had endless problems with that. Diseases, because people were throwing everything into the river. That had nothing to do with climate change. Okay, the same thing was true back in, ooh, I don't know, where do you want to look in history? Mm, 1600s when they had a bunch of horses on the street. In midi even in medieval times. There was always a problem. In Jerusalem, when Christ was living there, well, he didn't live there, but he visited. In ancient Bible times, they couldn't drink the water. So they drank wine. That's why wine was invented. Wine was a very common thing in Jesus' day. That's what you did to get liquid nourishment. That or you saved rainwater and that wasn't too easy to do when there wasn't enough rain. So pollution is indeed an issue and Gary's a big believer in the EPA, but he's not gonna be stupid and just vote for any old thing because it says climate change on it. And frankly, all those proposals about climate change, which they just got approved in Paris, are bupkis. They won't do anything to help climate change. But, oh, you got sold on it. Because they, you know, it's like a guy trying to date a girl. He uses the right words to get her into bed with him. Yeah, and Gary knows better than that, and he's skeptical. Yeah, just because you say it's going to help climate change. Let's have, let's have a look at the details. And if it doesn't work, he's going to be against it. And that carbon emissions thing was no good. It didn't work. Yeah, usually it doesn't. Taxes usually are the worst thing that you can do to solve a problem. And if you don't know that, you're going to have to do some thinking. When you go to buy a can of tomatoes at Walmart, the only one paying all of the taxes for all of the people involved in making that can of tomatoes is you. Walmart's not paying any taxes. Every income tax, every kind of tax, when you go buy gas at the gas station, do you know about at least 50% of it is taxes? And what are those taxes doing to make the environment better? Not a thing. Taxes for cigarettes, way out the wazoo. And they promised, oh, well, if we put a tax on cigarettes, that's going to help the schools. Yeah, and none of those tax dollars are going to the schools. See, they lie. Government lies. Gary's very skeptical of government. All libertarians are skeptical of government. But as you can see, there is a place for government to handle certain things if it's very carefully monitored. And Gary's real big on reducing pollution. He's a health nut. He's an environment nut. He loves skiing everywhere. He loves climbing mountains all over the world, and he has. So 
He doesn't want the environment wrecked. Who does? Nobody. So that ends uh, number six, environment. Now let's go to number seven, which is, well, I can't hardly read my handwriting. Racism. Oh, yeah. Libertarian Party is the one that's accused of this. Libertarian Party is typically accused of being, you know, mostly white young guys sitting in their mother's basements. Well, there's a certain amount of truth to that. But, apparently enough people with sanity were in the Libertarian Party to nominate Gary, and Gary is not like that. What Gary will tell you, and he started doing it at the first CNN town hall as a result of all of these, you know, protests over police shooting black people. He's like, wow, I, I had my head in the sand. These are his words, not mine. I'm repeating his words. I had my head in the sand about this. Black lives matter. It was a black girl who asked him the question in the CNN town hall at the very, be the very end of the first CNN town hall with... Uh, I think it was Chris Cuomo. You can, you know, find it in YouTube. He said, I had my head in the sand on this. I didn't know it was so bad. And from that moment on, if you look at his videos, from that date, whatever it was, onward, every single time he went to speak at a rally, he talked about it. And he didn't always get, you know, cheers from the audience. Because libertarians don't, don't, they don't want to make an issue pro or con race. They don't like the idea of laws that prohibit or protect a certain race because any kind of government laws that do that end up you know, making racism worse. But Gary is very pro-civil rights. And it's a personal issue to him. And it seems like, I mean, this is my opinion now. You'll have to you know, differ with me if you want. But it seems to me that from that first CNN town hall onward, he caught fire. He, this is like a really big personal thing to him. Black Lives Matter. We can't have six p six to one chance of being, you know, incarcerated or attacked or killed just because of your skin color. It's personally offensive to him. So much for the charge about racism. And, of course, you know, on the larger topic, which I'm going to get to in a later point, Gary is absolutely offended by Donald Trump's trying to round up and deport Latinos. Of course, you would expect Gary to be like that. He was a lot, almost, you know, lived most of his life in New Mexico, which is my favorite state. I, I'm supposed to say Texas is my favorite, but it's really New Mexico. And, you know, one out of every two people in either Texas or New Mexico is Latino. I mean, I grew up learning Spanish right alongside English. Like everybody else, I speak Spanglish sometimes. So Carrie was just like, it, it, it's like a mother bear defending her cubs when you hear him talk about Trump wants to round up and deport 11 million undocumented. He won't even say illegals. He hates the term. It's really personal to him. I've never heard somebody take it that personally. In other words, in his mind, it's like, you're doing this to this other person just because they're not white? How dare you? But he, he, he doesn't use those words because he's not a politician. He's just his personal reaction to it. You, you, know, you can hear him talk yourself because he, he talks about this. And his, his favorite example is like, oh, okay, you're going to knock on my door, and because I'm white, you're going to say it's okay, but you're going to knock on my next door neighbor's door, and because they're not white, you're going to in inspect their papers? He's, he's totally personally offended by everything Donald Trump says on this topic. But he doesn't run around saying, well, I care about people of color. That's not his way of doing things. But when you hear him react, then you know, oh, wait a minute. This guy just personally cares about it. Yeah. Who wouldn't? Any of us who lived who live in the Southwest, you know, I grew up in California, but it's the same thing there. 
You want to hurt my friends? You want to hurt my family? Because, you know, there's a lot of intermarriage and stuff. In the whole of the Southwest. You know, we, we lived together until the Mexican-American War. So, you know, I was born in California. I'll bet you I'm part everything. We all mixed together before the Mexican-American War. And the same thing is true of Asians. Did you, you have no idea how mistreated the Asians have been. Yeah, and I'll bet you money, I'm adopted so I can't prove it, that I'm part Asian, I'm part black, I'm part Latino, I'm part whatever. I look German. That doesn't mean nothing. So in the Southwest, honey, you don't mess with Latinos. They're part of us. Just as much as everybody else. And that's kind of what you hear come out of his voice when he talks. Yeah, because he grew up in first South Dakota, and then when he was really young, they moved to uh, New Mexico. That's how most people in those states think. I think the same way. It's normal. Okay? I don't know who the racists are, but they're not there. Or if they are there, nobody likes them. So much for racism in Gary. There ain't none. And there might be some pockets in the Libertarian Party, but they probably are voting Trump anyway. Because Trump is catering to racists. Trump is Hitler. Reborn. I can prove that easily, but you just look up any events in Hitler's life from 1932 to 1934. Donald Trump is replaying every single thing Hitler did. Gary's the total opposite of that. Which brings us to point number eight. This again is a libertarian, uh, art, you know, accusation. Accusation against the Libertarian Party. Libertarians are anarchists. They want no law at all. Well, I'm sure some of them are. But. That's not the party platform, and even if it were the party platform, it's not Gary's. And remember, Libertarians had to nominate him. He didn't win on the first ballot. He won on the second and barely. Because he does believe that there should be law. He doesn't believe in anarchy, but he doesn't believe that there should just be overwhelming amount of law. Yeah, the only good government is small government. And one of the things the Libertarian Party stands for that is in their platform is Original Intent Constitution, which is also stated commonly as Strict Constitutionalist. Power to the states and as little as possible to the feds. That's the way our country was set up. That's the libertarian platform since it was set up. That's Gary Johnson's deepest orientation. Power to the states. He wants to, he wants he wants education, you know, federal version, federal agency education abolished. He wants power on education and decisions on education to go to the states. He, he really wants the whole marijuana question to go to the states. He really wants, um, you know, uh, whatchamacallit, um, all social welfare to go to the states. But, you know, we're kind of not in that position right now, so it's going to take a while to work it out. But if, if he had his way, there would be no federal agencies, or precious few, and it would be states. States write this, states write that. The only thing that he would preserve, and the libertarians kind of fault him for this, the only thing he would preserve would be the Civil Rights Act and all of the associated laws with that. Beca precisely because he's not a racist. Precisely because he's totally incensed at how blacks and non-whites are being treated. It just drives him crazy. So he would preserve that. Which, you know, is a real important thing to blacks and non-whites because they're like, okay, you're going to take away our rights if we go back to states' rights. It was states' rights that got us in trouble back in Reconstruction. He didn't want that. 
So he doesn't want the kind of thing you're worried about. He wants to protect against it. So as far as anarchy goes, no, he's not an anarchist. Now the next thing would be number nine. Oh, here it was related. Number nine. Gary's been, I've seen this typed by people. Gary wants open borders. These are usually Trump supporters. First of all, they don't even know what open borders is. Secondly, nobody is arguing open borders. Okay? Not a person, single, zero, is arguing open borders. What they're all worried about, and they're mostly uneducated white guys who are my age. Oh, we just hate anybody who's not white. And we're going to call it immigrant so we can mask our racism. And so when Donald Trump says, oh, you know, we, we're not going to let any Muslims in this country. And we're going to get rid of the immigrants. And we're going to build a wall and make Mexico pay for it. Which is incredibly stupid. That doesn't stop the borders from being open, okay? Because the only part of the United States that can support a wall of any kind is between the U.S. and Mexico over approximately 700 miles. But our coastline is thousands of miles in perimeter. So anybody can still fly in. Anybody can still swim in. Anybody can still boat in. Anybody can still get on a railroad car and railroad in. Duh. So if anybody is guilty of open borders, it would be Donald Trump. Because he's too stupid to live to know what to do about it. But Gary's not too stupid to live. Gary says, well, wait a minute. Let's give them all work visas. Not citizenship. Work visas. Okay? That's different from a green card. A work visa just means the, you have the right to come here and work. That's not promising you anything. A green card has a certain amount of, has an attachment to an employer. This is not. This is just a work visa. And you get a social security number. Now, as it stands, illegal immigrants have to fake social security numbers in order to even get a paycheck. And when they get a paycheck, the income and Social Security taxes are paid out of their paychecks and they cannot get them back because they're not using a real Social Security number. Even if they had a real Social Security number, they can't get them back because they're just here on a work visa. Okay? So Gary's not producing open borders. What he's producing, and you should want this, what he's producing is an ability for a whole lot of people to pay income tax and pay Social Security tax, because remember, Social Security is going bankrupt. He's producing an ability for a whole lot of people to pay Social Security tax and income tax, but without the benefits. So it's like you got somebody else working for you for free. The more people that are coming here on a work visa and they're paying taxes into the system, that's less money you have to pay into the system. And the number one problem we have in the United States right now is we do not have enough people. That is why Social Security is going bankrupt. That's still not open borders, because with the work visa, part of the requirement to get a work visa is a background check. So then the only people who would get the work visas and the social security numbers would be people who are hardworking, honest people. And then they're going to come in to your state and they're going to buy stuff and rent stuff and, and buy more stuff in your state. Which means that somewhere, directly or indirectly, you benefit. Why wouldn't you want that? They're still not open borders. And then those people who fail the background check, oh, well now we caught ourselves a, a criminal. 
So now the United States is protected. So that is an actual way to have a border without spending $30 trillion. I don't think it will actually cost that much. Probably $1 trillion. Donald Trump's wall? The lowest estimate I've seen is $30 billion. But when you get done with all the boondoggles and the crony capitalists, he's going to benefit. You know, it could be. I mean, when you stop to think about, you know, time cost. Because, you know, you have a wall, you build it the first time, and it's not really quite built right, and then you have to build the foundation lower, and then you have to repair it, and blah, 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 and you have to hire all these people to, to walk along the wall. By the time you get done, you're talking about a $1 trillion boondoggle. Well, why not have instead a wall against those who fail the work visas and let anybody come in so long as they get they pass the background test and they get a social security number where they're paying for the taxes that you now don't have to pay for and they buy stuff while they're working here and they contribute to the economy but they're not benefiting from it isn't that a better wall so it's not open borders okay now we come to number 10. This is another Donald Trump lie. Oh, free trade is bad. We have these bad deals with NAFTA and TPP. And he keeps harping on it. And people who don't do their homework think, Oh, he's right. You know, he's right. Uh, Clinton is wrong. And Clinton should be against TPP. And she wasn't. And neither was Tim Kaine. Until they made such a big stink about it. Bernie made a big stink about it, too. But they didn't do their homework. Now, you can. Why don't you type in to Google, NAFTA, N-A-F-T-A. It was passed in the 1990s, so we got lots of information about what's happened as a result. And what are you going to find? Oh, like 20 million jobs were added net. Added. America ended up benefiting from NAFTA to the tune of 20 million jobs net of the ones lost. And the ones that got lost didn't get lost due to NAFTA. They got lost primarily due to technological advancement, which was happening at the same time. You know, it's kind of like paper. You know, before the advent of the internet and email, paper was king. And once the internet and email started to take off, well, Paper companies started to go out of business because they didn't have the kind of, you know, demand for what they, you know, for paper. It went down, way down. I used to do business in the 1990s, almost entirely on paper. And once the Internet started going along, I'm like, oh, no, I can do email. And I started doing email in 1998. And my whole life changed after that. I'm, I would run what would sh should be called a paper-intensive business. But it's not paper-intensive because I can use the Internet instead. And now I can even file the tax returns that I file for my clients on the Internet. I don't even have to send the clients anything on paper. I just send them an email PDF file. It's revolutionized my time. I have like five, six, seven times... The amount of free time I used to have just because I don't use paper anymore. Okay, but the paper people were hit. It had nothing to do with NAFTA. It had to do with technology. So during that same time, if you just look at jobs gained and jobs lost and you don't look into why, because Donald Trump would not have you investigate what he says and everything he says is a lie. It's about 20 million jobs net due to the friendlier trade terms between, say, Canada and us and Mexico and us. And here's the big kicker about it. The new jobs created were higher-paying jobs for Americans. Basically what happened was the lower-paying jobs got exported.
and the higher paying jobs got retained or we got new jobs that were never there before because we had the technology changes that we did and they didn't so they're higher paying jobs that means more of America was better off as a result of NAFTA TPP is similar but with TPP it's got one really important component that Donald Trump doesn't even understand if we're in TPP what it what that means is a sort of favorable trade status with non China nations in East Asia non China that's extremely important for saving us money and getting us better jobs because what it does is it basically says to China, hi, we want to be friends with you, but sometimes you're not so friendly to your neighbors. And so we're going to trade a lot with them. So if you do anything nasty to these neighbors, you're doing something nasty to us. And China will think twice. That gives us more leverage with China. Donald Trump doesn't understand that. He thinks that you should have tariffs. But honey, you know who pays the tariffs that Donald Trump wants to impose? You do. I bought a computer, an Acer Aspire 1 computer at Walmart in a hurry because I just needed a computer right that second for $350 in 2009. I had to get on a plane. I needed a tiny, you know, notebook sized computer. It was, you know, about the size of it's about 8.9 inches and I needed it right then it's made in China it's made in Taiwan it's made in Thailand it's made in all kinds of little countries or big countries in the Far East I paid three hundred fifty dollars for it if I were to buy the same computer now and I recently did it's about a hundred dollars it's wonderful okay but if Donald Trump had his way there would be a 45% tariff. So instead of paying 125 for that same computer now, even though it's used, or even if it were new, at 350, I would be paying 45% more because a tariff is always, always, always assessed against the buyer. Donald Trump flunks basic economics. I don't even believe he, I, I don't even know if he graduated from Wharton. There's no proof. Harvard turned him down. Basic economics. A tariff is paid by the buyer. So if Chinese goods come into the United States and without the tariff they cost a dollar, with the tariff you pay a dollar forty-five. So how much are you going to buy? You're going to buy less. And the trouble is that nearly everything is made in China or in the Far East. So not only do you not want tariffs, you want to figure out a way to make it cheaper to buy the stuff that you already buy. Yeah, and that's what TPP would do. Okay. There are certain provisions of it that maybe are not good. And what Gary says about it is pretty much what I said now, except he doesn't go into all that detail. And he says, you know, there because there are secret provisions nobody knows about. Once he's president of the United States, he's going to take a look at it, and, and if it doesn't, you know, do a good job, then he'll want to renegotiate it. Okay, well, Bernie Sanders doesn't know those secret provisions either. Bernie Sanders just says, oh, it has to be bad. And Hillary Clinton, she just caved in to Bernie Sanders. She doesn't know what's in it either. And Donald Trump, of course, wouldn't know right from left about anything. So Gary's the only guy giving a sensible answer. Well, let's look at it. But I can't look at it until I'm in office because there are secret provisions there. But based on the non-secret provisions, it would help us. And it would create jobs. And it would make things cheaper. Gary's not trying to get your vote. He's just answering the question. 
And of course, he supports NAFTA too, because he knows what the results are. It helps. It helps not everybody because of the technology changes, because of the cheaper jobs went outside the United States. But the ones that stayed and the new ones that were created are inside the United States and they pay more. Of course, if you don't do your homework, you don't know that. If you don't do your homework and you listen to Donald Trump lie and you listen to Hillary Clinton cave in to Bernie Sanders, who also didn't know what the hell he was talking about. No offense. I like Bernie. But you know what? He just says some things that aren't true. Now, in defense of Bernie, what he's worried about, and he's right to worry about it, is whether or not the American worker is getting a fair shake. Okay, but Gary's worried about that same thing. And unlike Bernie, Gary actually has a solution that will reduce or kill, nearly kill, crony capitalism, which is to get rid of the income tax. And that's kind of like Gary's personal quest. He hates crony capitalism. Bernie didn't like the trade deals because he suspected crony capitalism. Okay, well, Gary agrees with Bernie on that too. But free trade is not crony capitalism. Free trade is the opposite of crony capitalism. Crony capitalism happens when you make trade deals that favor certain organizations, certain companies within your own country versus others. And that's what Gary would be looking for. Okay, well, that's what Bernie wanted. He doesn't want crony capitalism. Okay, well, that's what Gary doesn't want, too. So, honey, you know, amongst the three of them, four of them, I guess, including Bernie, I think I'll trust Gary more. Because he's got more experience with it, and he's got a real, you know, what do you want to call it? He's hot to trot on the crony capitalist thing, like Bernie is. But Hillary Clinton, you know, she's was for it. And she's against it because it's politic now to be against it in order to get votes for the election. What's going to happen after the election's over? And is she going to be for it for the right reasons? I don't know. And NAFTA was something that got started by her husband, but you know, nobody makes a decision alone. What NAFTA was at that time and who really was the promulgator of it, I don't know. But it worked, and she's coming out against the one thing her husband was for when he was in office now. How trustworthy is that? you got to ask. Inquiring minds want to know. So that's my list of top ten lies against Gary Johnson. If you can think of others that I didn't mention, please put them into the comments. Thanks a lot. Peace out.